So the last topic I'm going to cover today is ketone monitoring. The objectives for this segment are describe two ideal times to check for ketones, list two ways to test for ketones, and list three situations where ketones might develop. So just as a quick review, um, ketones are more a problem for people with type 1 because they tend not to be making any or very little insulin, um, not so much a problem for type 2. And so why would someone get ketones? Because they've run out of insulin. So when we run out of insulin, we start to burn fat and that fat uh, produces ketones. So um, there are three situations where um, ketones are more likely to develop. So number one, if someone intentionally, for one reason or another, stops taking their insulin, if the insulin has gone bad, if, they, um, if their insulin needs have increased dramatically as they might in uh, an acute illness or in a stressful situation, or if something has gone wrong with their insulin pump or an interruption in the delivery um, of that insulin. So there are two ways to test. Uh, we can test with urine dipstick tests and many patients do use those. They're difficult to carry around because they come in a, in a multi-stick vial. Um, but they're okay to have at home. Even better than that are um, blood ketone meters. There are a few on the market right now that I will show you a couple of. These are home tests that can be done that really are quite accurate in um, helping people to problem solve. So we tell uh, our people that are on pumps that anytime they feel nauseated, that that would be a good time to test for blood ketones just to help them with problem solving. They can rule in and or rule out. It could have been that they ate something that didn't agree with them. It could be that they're getting a flu or they're sick. Or it could be that they've run out of insulin. And that's an easy thing to um, determine through a blood ketone test. And um, in early stages is uh, easily treated at home if people are understanding what, why this is happening and understand that they should take uh, an insulin shot if this happens and that they can test again to make sure that their problem has been solved. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, blood ketone meters and how they work. So as I mentioned, there are some meters on the market that can also test, aside from blood glucose uh, readings, can test for blood ketone readings. So these are just a couple of the meters that are out there. This is the Precision Extra. This is the Nova Max. They come with test strips that are specific for ketone testing. They go into the meter the same way that uh, it would for a blood sugar test. But in this case, it's going to read blood ketones. When you put the drop of blood on the strip, it's going to give you a number. Now this little guide comes with the kit that will show you that if you are 0.6 millimeters uh, or millimoles per liter or less, then that's normal and you shouldn't have to worry. If your number is 0.6 to 1.5, this means that there's something wrong. You are running out of insulin, your insulin's gone bad, the pump's not working, something's not right, you should take an injection of insulin with a syringe and you should monitor closely. If you're at 1.5 or higher, those are dangerous ranges and we instruct our patients, take a shot of insulin, but head for the emergency room. So this is just a real nice way that people can problem solve and get help more quickly before they get um, so sick and go actually into uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. And most of the patients that we really focus on for this are our pump patients because they have that risk of running out of insulin um, and uh, they run out very quickly. And so that's uh, our blood ketone testing uh, meters and supplies for patients with type 1 diabetes.